oh, hey, can you help me with my car? It's just gonna be in this dark alleyway. If you could just come help me like change my tire. And I'd be like, yeah, no problem. Let me just park my car over here. I'll give you my keys, my phone and my wallet and I'll go help you out. Hi guys, my name is Landon and welcome to my channel. Today, we're gonna be doing a little top 10 video on one of my favorite podcasts ever. My favorite murder. My favorite murder. Yes, my favorite murder with Karen Kilgariff and Georgia Hardstark. They are the two queens of true crime right now. So if you guys are not familiar with what my favorite murder is, it is a podcast that comes on weekly and they basically each take a murder every single week and kind of discuss it, go over the details, and give their own opinions on the matter. Now this is a comedy podcast that deals with true crime, so they do say it a lot in the podcast that they never mean to offend you. It's always about their natural comedic abilities, kind of talking about the true crime world, and it's just kind of this natural funniness that comes off. So the first episode premiered January 13th, 2016, so they have been doing this thing for a little over three years now. Every week they'll put out an episode that's a full-length episode as well as a mini episode that they call a mini-sode. And basically the mini-sode consists of hometown murders and hometown stories. Whether you're finding things in the wall, ghost story, whether it's a first responder story, anything goes at this point, but I love it. So I have been listening to My Favorite Murder for a while now, definitely since about 2017. And a fun little fact, in case you didn't know, on the 100th episode, they had a little music clip in the beginning of it where it was kind of like an EDM version of some quotes that Georgia and Karen say. And well, I made that. I made that uh, whenever I first heard it and I sent it to them when they were about, you know, 90 episodes in. And so Georgia tweeted it and then it went kind of viral a little bit, you know, got a couple thousand listens. I was like, wow, that's insane. From then on out, it was like four or five episodes. I was just waiting in anticipation to see if they were ever going to say anything about it. And ended up, they were saving it for their 100th episode. I was very, very honored. So thank you guys so much for featuring my little song on there. I put a lot of work into it because I love this podcast so much. It's worth it, 100%. Blah, 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 blah. I can literally talk about my favorite murder all day. But let's go ahead and dive into the real nitty gritty of the video today. We are going to be discussing the top 10 quotes in my favorite murder history so far. Now, if you're a fan of My Favorite Murder, you might also refer to yourself as a murderino. That term was sparked early on in the career of Karen and Georgia, and it kind of just stuck around and a whole community has been created, so. And number 10. Um, this guy, Mark, the writer, talks starts out by talking about the Armenian um, culture and everything, and he says there's a saying that little old Armenian ladies say in Armenian, which is, let's sit crooked and talk straight, which totally <laughs> made me think of us. Oh, my God. Isn't that the best? Let's sit cook crooked and talk straight. That's basically let's gossip. So in episode 32, Karen was doing a murder on the Zen Cal chicken murders. In there, she was saying that she heard that a phrase that was common to Armenian women, let's sit crooked and talk straight. And she says after that, that it reminds her of them too. And I totally get it. They're always like, let's just get down to it. And my, I mean, one of my favorite things is Karen's old timey voice. I haven't seen this place for 25 years. I literally die every time. Obviously I'm not as good as that, but you should go check her out. But I do love that quote. It's kind of one that's very fitting for them. And I do agree with Karen that it does remind me of Georgia and Karen together. Number nine. So real quick, I want to do March Corner. Okay. We have a new design. It's uh, a really cute, uh, kind of a cursive awesome thing. It says Sweet Baby Angel or Sweet Baby Angle. <laughs> and you can pick which one you want because, of course, I always say Sweet Baby Angel. But then one hometown murder misspelled Angel for Angle and then it's fucking gone from there. Sweet baby angle. So this all kind of started with Georgia. Georgia always says sweet baby angel whenever she's referring to something sweet, a little kitten, child, whatever she's talking about. And she was doing a hometown murder one time and one of the people that were sending a story in accidentally misspelled angel into angle. And so <laughs> ever since then, it's kind of like Georgia and Karen kind of teased it a little bit too. And ever since then, it's kind of become a staple in the MFM community. Now, instead of saying, sweet baby angel, he was a sweet baby angel. You say, oh, he was a sweet baby angle. If you say that, people will know where you got it from. But I cannot find the hometown murder that it was in. So if you guys know which one it was in, can you please comment down below? I did find a clip from episode 63 in the merch corner where they were talking about the origins of sweet baby angle. Number eight. And floss and wear SPF, 30 or higher. 30 or, you heard the song. You know what you're supposed to wear. I mean, 
Listen. Look. Look and listen. Look and listen. Wear your mother. Watch. Out. <laughs> Wear listen. your coat. Listen to your mothers. <laughs> Look. Listen. So this one has definitely become a staple in the My Favorite Murder community. You good? So like I was saying, it is a staple in the community right now. It's kind of just a look, listen. This is Karen in Georgia about to spill some real shit on you right now. So open up those ears, listen to what they have to say. Number seven. I think it is. It's like everybody has to fit into their box. And yeah. if you don't, I'm gonna punch you in the face even though you're <laughs> eight. All right. Um, and then I wrote down there, toxic masculinity ruins the party again. <laughs> Wait to see that meme. Toxic masculinity ruins the party again. So this quote was from a live episode, episode 44, where Karen was doing a story on the one, the only, John Wayne Gacy. She was referring to how Gacy really loved to do the indoor activities such as cooking, baking, cleaning, and stuff like that. But you know, his father disapproved of that and was definitely more into him being outside, working with his hands. And so during that time, a development was happening in Gacy's head, kind of making him hate people. So because of this, John Wayne Gacy kind of developed developed a little bit of anger from the situation. And you know, we all know what happened after that with his victims, unfortunately. Number six. Yeah, something went wrong. Clearly it's gonna come straight back to you. So clearly you have an anger issue and you snapped. Ugh. Here's the thing, fuck everyone. Right. That's, we should have said that right at the beginning. This Here's the thing, fuck everyone. So Georgia and her F-bombs, <laughs> Georgia is so funny and she is so straightforward. She is so kind of paranoid of the world around her that it, it creates this defense that is so cute to me because she is the smallest, cutest little girl and she's over here like, I got my pepper spray, I'm about to spray you. She said, ask questions later. We'll get to some more famous Georgia quotes. One of my favorite quotes of this entire series comes from episode 15. You know, that makes me think they've got to rescind the religious uh, tax status for Scientology. Oh it's been God. proven that it's not an actual religion. It's insane. That it's basically a humongous pyramid scheme. I apologize if it's your religion and you're offended right now. I, I don't think they don't want you to be mad at me, but you're in a cult. Call your dad <laughs> or someone that can help your you. Your parents actually love you. You're in a cult. Call your dad. <laughs> they were talking about Scientology and how taxation needs to kind of end on that because it has been proven to be a fake religion and simply used for like a pyramid scheme type of game. And so during that, at the end of that, Karen just kind of busts up and said, you're in a cult call your dad. And ever since then, that line has kind of stuck and transcended into something so much bigger. Through merchandise, quotes, little drawings, everything like that. So I love it so much. You're in a cult, call your dad, because that's the first thing that I would do if I realized that I was in a cult. All right, so number four quote. You mess with the wrong people. You end up in the forest at a dog's grave, mm -hmm. what have you, and then with a vodka bottle in your head. Free money isn't free. Like, just, just go without. Just... Just get a job, mm -hmm. buy your own shit, mm -hmm. stay out of the forest. It's never gonna be chill. Get a job, buy your own shit, stay out of the forest. Karen is always coming with that real, real information. She is here to tell you, I told you Georgia is very feisty with it. Fuck it, fuck you, fuck that. But Karen, she just coming with that real advice. This one comes from episode 23. All in all, it's time to just stay out of the forest, stupid. Number three. Yeah, and you're like, oh, are they gonna get mad at me? Fuck you. Well, because sometimes- You look creepy. That's a good way to let someone know they look creepy. Yeah, I get the idea because you're giving me the eye. Yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> don't, <laughs> we've said this a million times. Fuck politeness. Fuck politeness, we just, yeah. Fuck politeness. So this one has been a reoccurring quote throughout the entirety of My Favorite Murder. It's been something that's been so real and I tell all of my friends this because right now I'm living in Los Angeles and if you don't know Los Angeles or if you've never been, there are so many people around, so many people that are talking to you in the streets, doing all kinds of things, asking for favors, asking for money. And I'm usually too kind in those situations to where it'd be like, oh, hey, can you help me with my car? It's just gonna be in this dark alleyway. If you could just come help me like change my tire. And I'd be like, yeah. No problem. Let me just park my car over here. I'll give you my keys, my phone, and my wallet, and I'll go help you out. Like, that's who I am. And ever since I started listening to My Favorite Murder, it really kind of just opened up my visibility. 
to the world of craziness. Because once you, you know, you listen to almost 200 episodes of murder, torture, death, and stuff like that too, you start thinking, hmm, a lot of these things could have been avoided. And what's one way to avoid those? By fucking politeness. The thought of making someone else feel uncomfortable because you're scared and you don't want to portray that to them is okay if the potential is actually there. You know what I mean? So just because you don't want people to think that you're scared of them doesn't mean that you need to risk your life for that. So with that being said, carry a knife. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Be aware of all your surroundings and make sure that you're not doing anything stupid that can land you in a situation that could be deadly, you know, for you. Number two. <laughs> shit. There's true. like all kinds. Here, let me, Elvis, do you want a cookie? Want a cookie? <laughs> okay, that's, there, that's Perfection. the positive. That's, okay. Uh -oh. Elvis, a cookie? Yeah. Okay. Elvis want a cookie? If you are a fan of My Favorite Murder and I ask you, what does Elvis want and you have no idea, then I know that you're not a My Favorite Murder fan. <laughs> Let's just be honest. They end every single episode with Georgia asking her cat, Siamese cat Elvis, if he wants a cookie, followed by Elvis letting out this loud growl, informing her that yes, I do in fact want a cookie. That's been kind of the staple, and to me it always felt like it was like the outro of the series. And ever since they moved into their Exactly Right studios, they've had to have recordings of it. And I was so nervous because I was scared that it was gonna be the same recording over and over again. Because in the beginning, she would really go and get Elvis and ask him if he wanted a cookie and it'd be alive every time. Sometimes he wasn't feeling it, sometimes he was really feeling it, you know? And so um, I have noticed they've done a couple different recordings of it and they're placing them in there too to make it sound a little different each time, which is amazing. And I know that Elvis will always want a cookie. All right, guys, before we get to number one, let's go ahead and do some honorable mentions of the favorite my favorite murder quotes favorite 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 fav